What's up guys, Mike back. Got another package token. Let's see what we got here. Maybe some of y'all can guess what it is. Piece of foam. as heavy as I thought it would be. As you can see, we have a lithium iron phosphate. It's a Wheezy off of Amazon. It was 400 bucks. It's rated at 100 amp hours, 1280 watt hours. Uh, supposedly 100 amps max, 50 amps charging, 100 amps max. And then it can do 100 amps continuous and 200 amps for three seconds. So I wanted to pick up one of these batteries. So if you watch my channel before, you already kind of know that all the batteries I've been using are homemade with cells and I had my own BMS, same in that wooden box. But now I wanted to try to use one of these Amazon batteries because they're getting really cheap. Like I said, 400 bucks for the whole thing for another 1280 watt hours of uh, power storage. So it's pretty cool. So my plan is with this battery, we're gonna take that. I got a big old box of cable here, some really nice thick gauge wire. And then my plan is I got a set of these Anderson connectors. So we're gonna take these plus this wiring and then I have a box of copper lugs. I'll pull that out real quick. So we got some of these copper lugs. So basically I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a set of cables with an Anderson plug that goes from the battery bank, Anderson plugs to that new battery. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do all that, but I just wanted to make a quick little unboxing video just to kind of show you guys. Like I said, I've never bought this kind of battery before and I was really, really excited. I'm super excited to test this thing out. Actually, we're gonna write the, the date on here right now. So it's July 19th, 2022. So we're gonna write its birthday on there. That way we know how old the battery is 10 years from now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start making the cables and I'll show you guys how I make all the connections and all that good stuff. All right, real quick, we'll check the voltage of how it arrived. So if it's a dud, you'll be able to see it right now and I hope it's not. And we got 13.2, so that's pretty good. Um, I should probably put a little bit of a charge on it before we hook it to the main system, but my main system is not fully charged anyway, so I'll plug it in and then we'll monitor the inrush current and make sure it's not crazy. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and get those cables made and get it wired up. If I had to guess how much it weighs, I'm probably 20 pounds, it's pretty light. I mean, it's not as heavy as you think a battery this size would be. Ooh. Use your manual. And then here are the bolts for the terminals and then the little caps, so pretty cool. It's kind of on the floor, I don't have a mount for it. So where we gotta make our connections at. So here is the connection to the smart shunt, which is right here. And this is what keeps track of the amp hours going in and out of the battery. So if I want this to be accurate, we have to hook the battery up on this side. And this is the negative terminal, and then we'll just hook it right here on the positive. So that's it, I'm gonna put a wire there, wire there zip tie it together and I'll kind of show you what I'm doing when I come down here and that's it we're gonna put a big plug on it and call it good but we're gonna put it right here so and I did order some more of these bus bars because I really like these and my plan is to do a battery side bus bars and then a load side and then just have wires going between the two because right now these are getting pretty cluttered because I'm using them for everything so that's it I'll go ahead and get the cables kind of cut to length and made and I'll show you guys what they'll look like Okay, here's a quick overview of everything you need to make nice cabling. So we got, I believe, some two gauge, uh, or I'm sorry, this is four gauge power wire, Anderson connectors. We got copper lugs. We got a set of cutters, set of strippers, uh, marine heat shrink, and then I'm gonna grab the hydraulic crimper we're gonna use to make it. I don't have any black wires, so we're gonna use red, and then I'll just label it really well. That way I don't accidentally hook it up backwards. All right, so I guess we'll start by stripping this a little bit. These are way too small for this wire, but if you just kind of cut slowly, you can make it work. Clean up some of the frays. I guess we'll start with this. I hope these will fit on the battery. Let's check. Okay, yeah, see how these fit on there? And then these, oops, we'll screw to the post like that. So, we gotta set you guys up. Sorry, I'm having to work on the floor because I don't have an actual workbench. It's not covered in clutter. So, y'all know how that is. I'm gonna strip a little bit more back.
And you can use this method to make any power cables you want. You know, if you're doing car audio or, you know, any sort of low voltage stuff or mid voltage stuff. All right, and you take this, put it in your thing. I always shove it in like that. This is a hydraulic crimper. I got this at Harbor Freight. And then you just find the wire gauge. So we're gonna be the four gauge. That's two. Actually, I might use the two. I feel like the four gauge is always too small. Oh, maybe we'll try it. So there's what it looks like. And it has a hydraulic tool that goes bink and it just crushes it more or less. Just smushes it together. So we're gonna go ahead and swap the jaws out. I'm trying to make this video as uh, educational as possible so people at home following can uh, hopefully do it. Because my goal in making these videos is to try to teach you guys how to do this stuff. I'm not a very good teacher, I'll admit, but if you learn something, that's cool with me. All right, this is gonna be tricky one-handed. So now you load it into your crimper. And normally I start pumping just to kind of hold the terminal still. It's starting to crimp a little bit. Okay, come on. That's it, so now I got it in there. I don't know how good it's gonna show up on the camera. So it's in, that's it, and put the squeeze on her. And I, I squeeze it pretty hard. Gosh, all right, I'm gonna push it with the floor. All right, that's as tight as I can get it. So here's what the crimp looks like. Not very pretty, but you ain't getting that off. And I think that's a secure connection, so we're gonna roll with that. So I'm gonna do this again on the other one. Actually, let me put the heat shrink on before I forget. Yes, yes. So there's your heat shrink and then you hit, I'll hit it with a lighter off camera. And then now for the other side of the cable, so this is still the same one, we're gonna put one of these. And I have no idea how hard these are gonna be the crimp because I've never used them. So I assume I just do the same thing I did with these. Could be wrong, I could screw these up on camera and y'all would know. All right, so there's the crimp on the Anderson. I did it twice, and then this is the crimp on the lug. So we're gonna do this a total of three more times. All right, guys, it's like several hours later. So here's the cabling I came up with to connect my new battery. So I got this cable made, which I'm pretty happy with. I'm gonna maybe throw some zip ties on there and then some tape so I know which one's negative so I don't ever confuse it. I only had red wire, so that's what we're gonna run with. And then for the to connect it to the solar generator, I made this pigtail. So same thing, Anderson plug. I'm gonna triple check polarity. But one of these is gonna to go to the shunt and one of them's gonna to go to this positive bus bar. So this setup as it sits, it's not ideal. It's not its final form. It's just gonna be so I can use this battery for now. I still wanna add a bunch of fuses and stuff and this all still has to get redone at some point. I just, I have no idea how I wanna do it yet. So for the time being, it's ugly, but it's gonna work. And it's really just for testing. And once I'm kind of happy with the setup and you know, everything's working the way I want, then we're gonna build, you know, a version two of this, I call it, you know, version one, version two, whatever, and just kinda, it's better just to do it and not overthink the project, just to get it rolling. And then later on, maybe when you get some more inspiration or ideas, you can come back and add stuff or do whatever you gotta do. So anyways, I'm gonna get this installed and then I'm gonna probably put a charger on this because this is at 13.2 and I believe, let's see what the system's at right now. Maybe it's pretty close, who knows. I just don't wanna have a huge inrush of current either direction. Okay, 13.3, so that's quite a bit higher being a lithium iron phosphate battery. Um, and this is also charging at one amp. So that's it, we're gonna get everything connected, hook up, and once everything's hooked up, I'll show you guys the final product and kinda of how we got everything going. And then the next sunny day, I wanna let the whole system charge up completely. So now we have 100 amp hours, 150 amp hours, and 220 amp hours so we got quite a bit of capacity now but anyways that's gonna do it for right now so i'll get that hooked up and show you guys all right guys got the cables all made for the wheezy uh, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery so like i said we're gonna put this right here and at some point in the future i'm gonna hook this up to the shunt by itself and we'll do a capacity test but for right now we're just gonna hook it up and let it kind of balance out um so now 
with that plus that plus that battery we're at 6200 watt hours 6.2 kilowatt hours is what the system is at right now so i'm very happy with the anderson plug um this is all very ugly so don't judge me too badly and then in a future video i want to take this all apart and kind of redo the whole thing it'd be really nice to kind of clean all the wiring up add some safety stuff more fuses and all that good stuff um this is just a test setup for right now it's not going to be permanent but yeah i'm really, really extremely happy so what's cool about this is i can unplug this take that battery with me and use it on the go for like you know running an inverter or phone chargers or whatever you know other things you can think of so you can take some power with you because that battery is not very heavy but uh that's it so so far i'm really happy small update on the charge controller this thing's been kicking butt um and if you look right here i've done a total of 6.9 kilowatt hours with it so i don't run this when i'm at work i only run it on the weekends and then we run the air conditioner with it so so far so good on that i'm really happy with that but that's going to do it for today's video so if you like the video give me a thumbs up if you have questions leave them in the comments and i do my very best to get back to you so thank you guys very much